you too. Uh, we've run into a situation the last few years where we have had large amounts of work top claims that we didn't have in the past. So we came to the conclusion this year that it was time to us to start doing some training with our people that might put some things on your mind a little bit more, might be a little bit more careful about the way we go about our work. We have our workman comps and insurance with Claims Administrative Services, and this is Gary Fitzgerald, the representative from Claims Administrative Services, and he's going to show you some information and talk to you a little bit today about some of the areas where we are having most of our injuries to occur and how we might be a little bit more careful in that area if we're thinking about it ahead of time. I don't need that. Can y'all hear me? <laughs> don't need any big microphone to carry around. It makes you look all important, and I'm not that very important. Um, workman's comp. We'll try to get you out of here in uh, 30 minutes. Okay, does that work for y'all? All right. Undivided attention. This is participation. So when I ask you a question, you raise your hand. Okay. With the answer. Yes, I have done that. It's, this is. Have you ever done this? Yes, I have done that. Okay, so if there's nobody participating, we're going to be here a little bit longer than 30 minutes. Okay, first thing, when you give you a little background on how workman's comp works. In this district, the district is basically self-funded in workman's comp. So it's not like writing a check to your insurance company and mailing it out, it's already gone. If you don't have any accidents, the money stays in the district. Okay, so the only reason I'm writing a check is if one of you slips, trips, or falls, goes to the doctor. Doctor bill and medication, about $400 by the time it's all said and done. Okay? If you have to have therapy, it's about $3,000. You, you guys know the medical industry is just charging you an arm and a leg. Okay? So the same thing goes for workman's comp. We try to beat those bills down as much as we can, but we're still paying, the, you know, we're still paying for that stuff. So what we want you to do is just not get hurt. More information on Wormus Comp. If you get hurt and you're off work, you don't get paid for the first seven days. Okay? The first seven days is when you use your vacation pay, your sick leave, you know, to cover that income for those first seven days. Now, if you're off work for more than 30 days, on day 31, they'll come back and they'll pay that first week. Okay? Does everybody understand that? So if you get hurt and you're off a couple days, don't expect that check from workman's comp because it's not coming. All right? The other thing, you're off on workman's comp, you don't get your full salary. You get 70% of what you normally make. Okay? So I don't know about you guys, but that extra 30%, that's my milk and cookie money. That's where I can take my wife out to eat on Friday night so I can go play golf on Saturday. <laughs> So that 30% is very important to me because I need that me time. Okay? We'll go over some stuff today. I'll try to go through as fast as possible. This is 09-2010. We had five custodial, four food service, three other, and two teachers. Okay? Those are the claim numbers for that year. 010-011, we got five custodian, two other, one special ed, seven teachers, and a teacher's aide. So now we kind of swung the balance up. When you teachers get hurt on workman's comp, it costs the district more money than it does if the custodians get were hurt on workman's comp. Why is that? Because you make more money. So if you're off on workman's comp, we have to pay you 70% of your salary versus paying 70% of their salary. So when you guys are off on, when you teachers are off on workman's comp, you cost the district more money. So what we want to do is we want to stop that, give you an idea of where the money's going. Oh nine ten, fourteen thousand dollars worth went to custodians. We've already addressed that with the custodians. I scolded them and pointed fingers at them and all that. Said don't do that anymore. Food service ninety six hundred dollars. Teachers twenty seven hundred dollars. That's about average for a district this guy this size. I mean, goodness, you're walking down the hallway. How can you slip and fall? Happens all the time. Number one cause of injury is the school district. 010 011. Custodians, $20,000. Teachers, $25,000 worth of workman's comp. Okay. That tells me we got a problem. 
We had an increase in claims. We had an increase in dollars out the door. Like I said, this is not writing a check and sending the insurance company and you're covered. If you don't have workman's comp, if you don't get hurt, the money stays here. $25,000 a month paid for a half a teacher. I don't know, you guys could probably get paid pretty well here. No, that's a joke. You go ahead and giggle. Nobody's going to see if you're giggling. But now, nowadays, money's real tight in school districts. So $25,000 and 20, that's $45,000 right there that I can see that's just blatant. Can't chew gum and walk at the same time. 14 claims in 2009 $27,000. 16 claims, 2010-2011. Money paid is $45,900. $46,000 has already gone out of the district for last year's workman's comp. We're still on the hook for $43,000 more. That's what's in the reserve on a couple of claims that we've got working. So the worst case scenario, you know, my math's not real good, but that looks like, what, $89,000 worth of workman's comp. Entirely too much for a district this size. <coughs> and teachers have done their, share, their fair share. Custodians have done their fair share. Food service has done their fair share. Everybody's got a little piece of the pie going here. And you guys get picked on more than anything because there's more of you. There's more teachers than there is anything else in the district. So you think, well, our numbers should be higher. No, you're, you're, you're teaching. You walk to the classroom and you're not, you know, the coaches, yeah, sometimes. If you're teaching in a classroom, you shouldn't be falling down. You shouldn't be running into walls. You shouldn't be doing the silly things. Safety program anywhere you go is use common sense and pay attention. You were taught that since you were this high, they told you not to put that screwdriver in that electrical socket. <laughs> and it's stuff we don't want to hear because we already know we're the smartest people alive. Okay? At least I'm the smartest person in my world. I don't know about y'all. I tell my aunt wife that every day. Oh, and you saw the, the this year, we got one claim for $190. $190. That's excellent. That's outstanding. That's outstanding. I would venture to say that's not going to end up that way at the end of the year. But we're going to try to hit this off. Slips, trips, and falls. Number one cause of injury in school districts. Uh, occur in any part of the workplace, either inside or outside. May result in serious outcomes. Most of the time, when we slip and fall, what do we do? We get up and look around and see what it's all. Why is that? Because we know we weren't paying attention to what we were doing. We want to know if anybody else saw us not paying attention to what we were doing. And then we don't have to explain it to them, well, I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing, I just fell down. Okay? To the worker, these are the, these are the, the losses. You got pain, lost wages, temporary disability, reduction of quality of life, depression. If you're hurt, you're depressed. Okay? I mean, it's, any of you ever been hurt, just just ache all day long? It kind of puts you in a depressing mood. For the employer, it's a loss of productivity. Increase of insurance premiums, which is what I do. Uh, cost associated with training to replace a work, replace a worker. Uh, cost of medical treatment. Like I said, the cost of medical is going out the roof. So what we've got to do is we've got to do everything we can to stop this from happening. This is one of the ways to stop it from happening. Does this look familiar? How many of you have been up in a chair this year? The rest of your line. Oh, I just said a chair. Y'all are teachers. You're supposed to listen. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a ladder. Okay? It never has been. It never will be. I may have been up in a, teach in a chair with ropes. Ever, ever. Not just this year, ever. I may have been up in a chair with rollers and swivels. Okay. I've been up in a chair like this. Not a problem. I've been up in a chair with rollers. It's kind of like this. I've been up in a chair. I have been up in a chair with rollers and swivels. You're like, you got to hand one arm here, one arm here, and oh, i gotta, I got to reach them. I'm just asking for trouble. It's not a chair. Do not use it for a chair. Get a step ladder. Get a step stool. Get something other than a chair. Now, don't go get the desk because a desk is the same thing. I had a teacher this year. 
back in.